Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to show you how a mathematical induction, which is simply called induction, works. Um, and here, our first example is going to concern the sum of the first n integers. We know that um, we have this formula for the sum of the first n integers, and in this video, we're going to use induction to prove this formula. Um, there's actually a much neater and simpler proof of this formula, which I'll do in a different video that I'll link below this video. But yeah, here I think um, the first induction example is best done with this particular mathematical statement. Now, induction is not restricted to these kind of statements. It's more robust. So like uh, in example four, I'm going to show you how to use induction to prove a divisibility statement. And um, in example five, I'm going to show you how to use induction to prove that um, uh, a set with n elements has two to the n subsets. And then in the final example, I'm going to show you how to prove that um, every non-constant polynomial is a product of irreducible polynomials. So induction has like a lot of freedom. It's not just like concerning these kind of statements. But, uh, you know, the formula, which is like the steps are all the same, regardless of what you're trying to prove. So the steps are best illustrated through this example, as I said. And so let's start the proof. Whoa, sorry. So let's first display proof. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so here's how our proof starts. Our proof starts with the basic case, which is case one. And that in this case is where um, n is equal to one. Okay, when n is equal to one, we see that like on the left hand side, there's nothing to add. It would just be the number one by itself. And then on the right hand side, using the formula, we'd plug in one everywhere we see an n. And we see that like on the left hand side, since we have nothing to add to one, the value of S1 is just one. And then on the right hand side, using the formula, we see that we get one times two, which is two divided by two, which is one. So case one checks out. Now, like, you know, once you get used to this, you don't have to show these first couple of cases. These, these first couple of cases are just formality. So we go to case two. That's where n is equal to two. This time we have um, something to add on the left side, which is we're going to have to do one plus two. And we know that one plus two is three. But what about if we use the formula? Well, the formula will say replace um, the ends with two. So we do that and we get six over two, which also gives us three. So we see that it checks out. Like I said, these two um, couple of cases are just formalities, so you don't have to worry about them in the future. Um, all right, it's really about this and the next step. So this step is the most important step, and it's called the inductive step. And this is the case where n equals k. And so um, here's a step where you assume that the formula actually works, that the formula that you have. You've only checked it with a couple of simpler cases, but in this step, in the inductive step, whatever it is that you're trying to prove, you assume it to be true. So that means that we assume that sk, which is a sum of the first k integers, will have to be k times k plus 1 divided by 2 as the formula dictates. So basically, as I said, we assume that the formula works here. Well, now what you do is the second most important step, which is um, the case where n equals k plus 1. So the next step beyond the inductive step. And this is the final step. So in this final step, what we're going to do is try to add the first k plus 1 integers. And that'll look like this. We terminate uh, with uh, k plus 1, right? Uh, but then we remember that in the inductive step, we assume that the formula works, meaning that we can use a formula to add the first k integers. And we already had that in the inductive step that the sum of the first k integers is k times k plus 1 divided by 2. So here, um, we're going to use the inductive step, the assumption, to add the first k integers, and then we're going to add on that very last integer, k plus 1. Okay, and so here we're kind of brute force adding. We're not using the formula. We're using what we assume to be true in the inductive step. And so, you know, we replace the sum of the first k integers with what, with what we assume to be true, which is that it's k times k plus 1 divided by 2. And here we have um, that we're adding the very last um, number, k plus 1. And if we simplify this algebraically, we get this. And it's fairly straightforward algebra, so you should be able to follow. 
Okay, cool. So this is brute force adding because we added the first k integers using the formula, and then we added on uh, manually the last number, k plus 1, and we simplified. But what about if we use the formula that we assume to be true? That is, what if we use a formula to add the first k plus 1 integers? What would happen? Well, that would mean that we come to this formula and replace the k here and the k here with k plus 1. And that will look as follows. First, as I said, we replace the two k's with k plus 1. And then we simplify and look at our final result. Our final result matches exactly with the brute force adding on that last term. So this is how induction works, and this shows you that the formula we assume to be true is in fact true, That's right? I don't know if I should explain it anymore. I should probably like, yeah, shut up and like go to the next example. So I'll do that. All right, uh, I hope you enjoyed this and keep watching.